Right, I have managed to get the Sony to go on charge without being naughty because sometimes it won't do it and I have to have the little lead. Now what I've done, I've taken out the other small camera, the other uh, a Sony and put it in my pocket ready. And I can use that for video only because it don't do photos. I'll try it again. It does it in the dark. So going up through the avenue of trees. Anyway, we're leaving Will's Neck now. And we're making our way down to a track into that avenue of trees. And we're going to be walking along that. You can walk outside it as well if you wanted to get some sun, say. You can do a bit of both. Um, just down beyond these ferns is a huge, massive quarry. Some of the stone from that quarry was used to build Heathrow Airport. Well, you know, the base of it, I suppose. I don't know what, 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 what part exactly. Um, it must have been the runway, I suppose. Yeah, so a bit of Somerset is on an airstrip in London's main airport. Right, I haven't seen any more people, but this, where I'm going now, called Triscombe Stone, there's a history to it, and there's plaques. I used to know it all off by heart, but I can't remember half of it now. But, um, like I said, these are marching routes. But there's a car park here. You have to come up through a very, very steep, windy, narrow track. As if you're coming from over Stowey. And, uh, it's quite, it's quite steep, actually. It's always a bit worrying going up it. I always used to find, in case anyone passed me and I had to move out the way. I thought, God, I don't want to go too far over there. And, um, and there's people drive up that. A lot of people prefer to go to Lydiard Hill to park. That's why you get a lot of people walking from there to here and back. Uh, I can hear people, like I said, it's a place where people drive and they sometimes stop and sit out over here and have a picnic and everything. I've walked up from down from from Triscombe Village, where there's a real old pub down there. I've done the Greenway, which is a path that goes the other side of the hills here. Um, I still have walked all round it. I've, I've been on the top, I've done it all. Yeah, I've done that. So I'm just doing a bit of video in because we'll be coming across people. I heard people. Um, because you come into a car parking area. People don't stray far from their vehicles. Well, you do if you're like me and you, you know, of course people do. They go off on a hike. They park up and they walk around the hills all day. I'm, I'll probably go and read the plaques again just to remind myself. Look at that, and there's a path going that way. There's a path there you can follow, and I think that's the path I'd have to take to go to Ashot, to go to the church where I last visited there. I picked up this lovely little book of poems and I gave it to my sister Jude. Oh, a child is crying. Yeah, so it's a small walk I would have liked to have done if I could have parked there, walked there and back, or come back a different way. But I can't, look how long it's taken me just to get here. I'll turn off in a minute because I can hear families. It's quite dark and cool, but you can walk out of the 
out with the trees if you want to. And of course there's people who cause. Right, over now everyone. Actually I'll keep it on till we get to the stone. Yeah, I'll go and, I'm going to walk over to the plaques. Oh. This is just some stone. That's got a history. And here we've got a signpost. Triscombe Stone, Ashcock Common and Lidget Hill. That's Ashcock Church that I'd love to go to visit again. Um, I, re I, re I drove there last time I went there. Crocombe Park Gate via the drove. And that's what we'll be doing in a minute. But I'm just going to go wander over to the plaque. I'm just going to wander over to the plaque. Just to remind myself a bit of the history. And this is the car park. Where people come. A lot of people with bikes, mountain bikers come here, I wouldn't ordinary bikers, and they park up with all their gear and um, everything. Oh, I don't know I can get food in my bag on. Wait a minute. Two bags getting in the way. Alright, wait a minute. Lovely though, isn't it? Gorgeous. And there's walks everywhere. Look, you can go up there as well. But we'll just go over to the plaque. And this is where I used to come and park Alberta. I can remember parking her up next to that fence over there. And I left her while well, I did my, all my exploring around here. Um, Mr. Stone, Reese Jeffrey's Road Fund. Mm. And I parked Alberta over there. I'm just going to read a bit about this. Triscombe Stone. An important feature of this location is the track running along the ridge known as the Drove Road. This track has been used for thousands of years by traders, travellers and farmers and soldiers. It's also, now, also on Hairpatch, a Saxon army route, recorded in the 14th century as the Alfred Road. In the year 878, King Alfred may well have been familiar with the route during his stay at nearby Athelney. On the Somerset levels. Standing a mere two and a half metres feet high, the nearby Bronze Age monolithic called Triscombe Stone indicates that the Drove Road also had a prehistoric role. The stone is protected as a scheduled ancient monument. Will's Neck. Walk to the top of Will's Neck and you will be standing at the highest point in the Quantocks. At 1,261 feet or 384 meters. This wild and dramatic location is a prehistoric ceremonial landscape with numerous burial mounds. In the 7th century, Will's Neck of the Wheelas Britons was one of the last parts of Somerset to hold out against the invading Saxon king Ina. On a clear day, the views are spectacular. Directly north across the Bristol Channel is the coast of Wales, with the Brecon Beacons further inland. To the, Wales, to the west, across the Vale of Taunton, are the Brendan Hills and Exmoor. To the south is Taunton, with the Black Down Hills beyond. To the east are the Somerset Levels, leading to the Mendip Hills. Stone from Triscombe Quarry, which can be seen just below the stone to the southwest, was used to construct road construction and part of the runway at Heath 
and for building runway one at Heathrow Airport. The quarry is now disused and provides a variety of peaceful and unusual wildlife habitats. I can actually remember on one of my walks coming up, I came up from um, past the quarry, I came up a track to here. Yeah, I can remember that. That was about two years ago. I was doing the Greenway walk. I came up part of it, I think. I can't quite remember. Might have been a different walk I did. Yeah. Right over note then. So here we are. Back on. Yeah, I am sure I emerged from the top of that road on a different walk I was doing once. Yeah, I remember it now. Because I think I was quite surprised that I came out at the stone. Triscombe stone here. Great views across. A marker stone. It's a grade one listed schedule monument, apparently this. A Bronze Age monolithic stone. Right, now here we've got this gorgeous avenue of trees. Which I've walked along a few times. I can take my hat off now actually. Um, and which I'm going to walk along now. This lovely, lovely avenue of trees. It's a perfect walk on, uh, when it's very hot. But I don't think it's as hot today. I think it was very hot yesterday and it's going to be tomorrow. So I think I've chosen the right day to do this walk and to do it this way, to actually come through the trees. I think I've made a sensible decision. Once again, my sister Jude has done all this. She knows this area really well. This is the place she wanted to rest for the rest of eternity on these hills because she loved them so much. She had lots of memories of enjoying her walking. I mean, I was always wondering whether to have my ashes up here, but I'm also drawn to Glastonbury. But I am quite strongly drawn to, oh, of course I am. In some ways I wouldn't mind coming back here. If she's gonna be here, I can meet up with her again. But I think in spirit, part of me will always be here as well. I would always be walking here. And one day when I'm walking here, I will see my lovely sister Jude. And she will walk and we will hold hands or link arms like we used to. I have to be careful, I can't always share this sort of thing because uh, we have to be so careful these days, what we say and do. But I keep it for myself. It's my personal visual diary. My, my reflective journal. And, um, yeah, we've still got time. I just see a lone biker. You know, all through here, you can see when I've walked up all the way from down below once up there and, you know, I, I really feel bonded with this place as well. Through the walking, exploring, understanding the trees and the tracks. This was a very good choice today to do this. I, like I said, I only thought of it yesterday. When the when I went up the shop to get some bread and bits and pieces, and I came across the heat. Absolutely no wind. It was absolutely baking. I thought to myself, then you won't be able to go out, Sheila. You won't be able to.
just let these bikers go by and we'll have a quick view out here. You can see the quarry. It'll be all covered up now. There's bits of it showing. You can't see the trig point, but the trig point's just up above that path there. But the quarry is that scalloped out bit. There's a scalloped out bit there. I'll just zoom in a bit and might show it. It's, uh, it used to be a very rich red colour, actually, but there's a lot of plants now it's just used. A lot of the plants have just grown over it, you see, reclaimed it. So that's Triscum Quarry. Used to uh, runway one at Heathrow Airport was built from that stone. Yeah. Okay, we'll go back inside now. I'll just turn off for a minute.